Let's get across the latest detail on Bridget McKenzie and the Prime Minister's confirmation last night here on Sky News that a national hazard reduction plan is very much on the table following this summer of fires. To do all of that, I want to welcome back to Credlin for 2020 my good mate and colleague Peter Gleeson, who not only sits in the chair, as you all know, each week now at 11 o'clock to get you across the first cut of tomorrow's papers, but this year he's also going to bring you a very special new program focused very much on and about regional Australia. The new show will air right across the country on the Wynn Network at 7 o'clock weeknights. And I hope I'm good and that uh, you might let me on. I'm a country girl for a chat one night. So, Gleeson, I want to bring you in, uh, if I can. There's a couple of things. I know we had a whole lot of things we wanted to get to, but I've just seen there and have been told in my ear about some breaking news. It would appear the whole issue of the sports rorts, I think we're calling them now, and Bridget McKenzie has been referred to Prime Minister and Cabinet. It's a government department. It's a, the Prime Minister's own department to investigate. And specifically, they'll be investigating whether or not there's been any breach of ministerial standards. What do you make of that? Well, I thought a week ago that Bridget McKenzie would be fine. Uh, you know, pork barrelling, as we know, Peter, is uh, not unusual in politics. And, you know, you could see exactly what she was up to just prior to the May 18 election. She was trying to shore up some votes in some incredibly uh, close uh, marginal seats, but particularly seats that were uh, uh, invariably LNP seats. But, uh, uh, look, I think the last week has been quite uh, prescient for Bridget McKenzie. She's been on the front page of the major newspapers just about every day. We saw she was on the front page of today's SMH, sorry, the age photograph of her there uh, uh, carrying a gun. And we know that the latest revelation is that she provided a $38,000 grant to a gun club of which she was a member. Now, it's interesting here in Queensland, we've got the Triple C looking at uh, disclosures or non-disclosures by our state politicians, in particular the Jackie Tratt affair. If you were to apply what uh, Alan McSporran, the Triple C chair, is proposing in Queensland right now for disclosure around uh, pecuniary interests and, 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 and so forth, it would be a jailable term for Bridget McKenzie. That's a really interesting point. I put it today to the Triple C, and that's exactly what they said. So, look, it is becoming a real thorn in the side of the government. It's the only thing that the Labor Party is talking about. It's got all the hallmarks of the Ros Kelly whiteboard saga. Oh, gee, I would have said a week ago she was fine. Not so sure now, Peter. Yeah, I've got to say... Um, I call bull dust on sending it to Prime Minister and Cabinet. I, I, being assessed by the PM's own department against the rules of the uh, Ministerial Code of Conduct will turn up with nothing uh, because quite clearly the membership of this gun club against the Ministerial Code of Conduct is inside the rules. The amount of the membership per annum is less than the $300 that she's then required if it goes above $300 to disclose to the parliament. So she's inside the rules. I can tell you now, looking at it, she's inside the rules in relation to ministerial standards. But if you and I walk into the Breakfast Creek Hotel in Queensland and we ask people standing by the bar, do you think she giving $36,000 of your money to a gun club that she was a member of passes the pub test they'll tell you it doesn't. And they're two very different things. There's also the legal question about what head of power she used to expense the $100 million in sports grants. That's where the Auditor General goes. That's not at all inside the PM&C remit to look at issues like ministerial code of conduct. So this is just, I've got to be honest, a bit of smoke and mirrors because the government has been, I think, really under pressure in the last 24 hours, Gleeso. They've got to be seen to be doing something. And once they flick it mm. off to Prime Minister and Cabinet, when they come on shows like this, they'll just say, it's currently being investigated, Peter. It's currently being investigated. Yeah. What do you make of that? And it's... 
Well, it's the good old, as you say, the good old pub test, and there wouldn't be a better pub in Australia to find out what the pub test thinks of Bridget McKenzie's uh, dalliances in the past uh, few weeks uh, than the Brecky Creek Hotel. And that's the thing. It's a perception thing. The perception is that she's done the wrong thing. Is she within the ministerial guidelines, the code of conduct? As you mentioned, Peter, and you, better than anyone, would know exactly what's required from ministers. Maybe there's a case for having a look at how ministers dole out these particular grants. And as I said... You know, Ros Kelly, uh, she was a victim. She was a casualty of exactly the same sort of thing, except uh, the rules uh, uh, nowadays uh, don't allow that particular uh, action to be, to be worked upon. So, look, I, I think the government has a problem here. She's taking uh, uh, messaging away from, uh, from uh, Scott Morrison's ability to try and deal with the uh, bushfire crisis and, of course, Frydenberg uh, and, and the economic narrative. But certainly, I think... Uh, you know, I, I think she's in a bit of strife from a public perception perspective. You're right, and she's absolutely sucking uh, clean air, clear air, uh, from the Prime Minister, who, who himself has had a difficult summer. Now, he's got no probity issues. He's just got to start to rebuild some of his political capital. He's certainly sure. doing a lot. Uh, you know, great feedback from the interview last night. But every single time the government tries to send a minister out there to amplify their positive messages, they're being hit with friendly fire mm. on Mackenzie. Now, I think the biggest issue with Mackenzie is that she is the Deputy National Party leader. So even if the PM said, sorry, Sunshine, you're no longer a minister, you've got to stand down because of this calamity, mm. the, the position she holds, Deputy National Party leader, is a gift to the National Party party room, not the Prime Minister. And with it, under the coalition agreement, comes a guaranteed seat in the cabinet. So this is where the Prime Minister is in a very difficult bind.